I want a 3D VTuber model, but I'm kind of broke. So the next best option is to make it myself. Except I also don't know how to do 3D or use Blender. But then I remembered this. Here's how I turned a 2D VTuber concept into 3D reality using Vroid Studio and the hiccups along the way. And oh boy, were there a few hiccups. My name is Zikos and I like to make no BS VTuber guides speaking from my own experiences. Let's get into it. Vroid has been around for a while and I did dabble in it for a little bit in an older video. But now I want to properly go ham. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take this piece of concept art of Zana, my female alter ego, and bring her to life in 3D using Vroid Studio, mostly for free, preferably. You'll see what I mean by this later. The first thing we'll do is to figure out how Vroid actually works because I haven't touched this thing in years. So to do that, I took the guns blazing approach and dove right in. On the surface, it's as easy as I remember. It's basically a character creator very similar to one you'd find in video games. <laughs> And by the grace of the devs, it was updated to include many more options, especially for the eyes since I last opened it. This was great and all, but when I navigated to the clothes and hair sections, I didn't find anything that really fit Zana's original design. And that meant having to create custom assets. Oh, what's this? Booth, you say? I mentioned Booth in previous videos, so I'm aware of its existence, but I never really used it for Vroid. So like with every other problem and minor health concern we experience nowadays, I consulted the internet. Aha! Bingo! After watching this video by Pokena Pup, it didn't take me long to learn how to chuck custom outfits on my test character. It seemed pretty straightforward. The video is 3 years old, but at the time of recording this, it was still very relevant and helpful. Thank you, Pokena, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. <laughs> now, to put what I learned into practice, I scanned Booth for a free outfit and I stumbled upon this. Come on, it's an outfit of my Oshi. I, I just had to, okay? <laughs> So to import this outfit into Vroid, all I had to do was download it, go into Vroid, and click the import button. Find my new outfit, select it, and voila! Done! Just like that. Now all that's left to do is adjust the sliders for a better fit. With this knowledge under my belt, I grew more optimistic about converting this 2D concept art of Zana into a moving 3D model. Now that my testing is done, I'm ready to move on to the real deal. Thank you, Rarura. You shall be missed. After a heartfelt salute to my test model, I opened up a new Vroid project file and got to work straight away with creating Zahn as a base model. I set up as much as I could in Vroid, facial features like her eyes, nose and mouth, as well as her physique and skin tone, and once that was done, I jumped into Booth to start shopping for outfits to use. I tried to look for free ones first because I was hesitant in spending too much money, but the selection felt limiting for the kind of design I was going for. So I figured, screw it, if I'm gonna spend money, I might as well go all out and go ham and get this model looking really good. No, I swear I don't have a spending problem. You can't prove anything! 15 euro. I've spent 15 euro. For everything. So yeah, see, I don't have a spending problem. Ooh, is that new Addo merch? Yeah, I do. My personal habits aside, let me show you my haul and how much each item costs. Most of them were either free or really cheap. The most expensive part of this outfit is actually the most important, the jacket and the shorts combo. It even had some accessories, which I found cool and relevant to the original design. So with my shopping done, for now, I went back to Vroid and imported everything for Xander to wear. She's no longer in her undies. <laughs> However, as you can see, it still doesn't quite match up with the concept art. We still had some work to do. Now that we got the outfit together, oh, and the hair, you can't forget about the hair. We'll need to retexture everything to match Zana's original color scheme. And in order to do that, we need to head into each item's texture editor and change every single item's colors. But we won't be doing it in Vroid itself. Instead, I exported the textures into its own folder and then opened it up in Photoshop where I used overlays, color fills, and light and color adjustments to change the colors of each texture while still preserving its original detail. To explain everything I just listed out, I used overlays whenever I wanted to apply a certain texture to another part of the clothing like this diamond shaped quilting pattern on the inside of the jacket. And when it comes to recoloring certain details, I selected the area using the color selector tool and simply filled it in with the new color like so. And if I wanted to preserve details, I would set the layer style to something appropriate alongside light and color adjustments. I use this method the most as with a combination of levels and color correction, I was able to adjust the majority of the assets to the colors I needed them to be. 
like so. A combination of these three allowed me to adjust each item's texture to better suit Zana's original color scheme in her concept art. And don't worry, I made sure to check if the artist I got these assets from allows retexturing of their work. This took by far the most time and somewhere along the way, I decided to add this half skirt because I thought it looked cool. And to get the half skirt, I just removed part of it when I was re-editing it in the Photoshop file. With the retextures done, we were almost there. Now all that's left to do was to find a way to give her her signature bangs and attach her wing. Oh, uh, um, maybe if we... Oh, well, shit. Bob! Bob! Oh! Yep, figures. Everything was going a bit too smoothly, so some hiccups had to happen at some point. The issue here was that the wing was automatically imported in as part of the back category for the hair. And considering that our custom hair is in the overall hair category, the wings just kind of removed the hair entirely. <laughs> It was a bit of a headache to figure out, so me being the Irish lad that I am, decided to apply the good old fashioned mentality of, ah sure, it'll be grand. This would soon bite me in the f***ing arse. So I decided to work on Zana's bangs and headband, planning to eventually come back to the wings problem later. But I never worked with Vroid Studio's hair system before, and considering what happened with the wings, I figured it was a good start to at least put this in the extra hair layer so that we wouldn't look like another TikTok prank video. I looked up some videos on YouTube to figure out how the hair system works. Shout out to V Tanjo and Chippy for some awesome tutorials. And after a few tries, I eventually got something that looks pretty decent. The headband would also be pretty straightforward. It was basically a very thick strand of hair that I could wrap around her forehead and then color black. Now that her bangs were done, it was time to go back to the biggest problem, the wings. I was once again stumped, so like before, I consulted the internet. After a bit of research, I found that the best solution was to move the hair that we had from overall category to the extra category so that we can now use the wing in the back category. That's totally not confusing. <laughs> what? But there were two problems with this. The first was that I didn't know how to do it. And many videos that talked about it involved programmer speech that I was not gonna delve into. And the second, well, remember when I said that thing about it biting me in the ass? This would soon bite me in the f***ing arse. Yeah, this was it. <laughs> Even if I found the way to bring the hair into extra, it conflicted with the bangs I had literally just made and Vero didn't have any built-in features to merge items together. At least none that I could find. But I stumbled upon a Reddit thread that saved me a massive headache because it linked a Vero plugin that did exactly what I needed it to do. And it was called Yashiyori. Yashiyori is a plugin that allows the user to move items to whatever category they wanted. Yes! Jackpot! With this, I can finally... Oh... Alright, alright. One 10 euro purchase later, and I'm finally able to move the main hair into the extra category, allowing us to finally use our wing properly without going bald. <laughs> Technology! Technology. And to solve our little conflict problem with the bangs, all I needed to do was to use the Yashiori program again to move her bangs into the front hair category, and voila! Honestly, that 10 euro was pretty worth it. <laughs> it was really easy. Now all that I needed to do was to export it out of Vroid Studio as a .vrm file and import it into VC Phase, and there you have it! A fully rigged 3D model that is pretty darn close to the original with minimal hassle and minimal artistic experience required. Was it free? No, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you a couple of three things. Vroid is completely free. And the only reason why it cost me money was that I wanted to replicate Zana's original design to a T. And mind you, even doing that, all of this only cost me 15 euro. Well, 25 if you count the plug-in uh, at the last minute there, but that's besides the point. A typical custom-made 3D VTuber model is on the market for hundreds if not thousands of dollars USD. And not everyone has that kind of money to throw around. Hi, hello, Editor Z here to say something important because I know for a fact some of y'all are going to be calling me out on this. I'm not saying that they are overpriced or unjustified. Listen, 3D models cost as much as they do because of the sheer amount of work and time that goes into them by a team of dedicated professionals with skill sets honed over years of practice. You can always shop around for better deals, but generally if you want high quality craftsmanship, you gotta pay the high price, especially for a model handcrafted specifically for you. Alright, now back to the video. So if you're a new VTuber, an aspiring one, or a season 2D user who wants to give 3D a try, then this is a much, much safer option to test the waters with. And sure, 
once you've decided to commit and have the funds for it, then you can go ahead and purchase your own custom 3D model. I up it up. But until then, let's do away with the misconception that starting VTubing is expensive and that you have to fork out your entire life savings just to begin. It's completely false and the proof is right in front of you. If you like this kind of process video, then I'm sure you'll love this one where I try to make a 2D VTuber model using Life2D as a complete beginner. Ciao!